Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. The Three Pillars Podcast is that podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness, to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey that we call life. Traditional masculinity. Is this important? Is it important in today's society? Absolutely. We're going to get into that today on uh, this week's episode. Um, guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in to the Three Pillars Podcast. Thank you for all the support you've given. Uh, please continue that wherever you're uh, watching this or listening to this. Please drop a comment, drop a like, drop a rating, a review, whether, again, if it's on YouTube, Rumble, Apple, Spotify, wherever you're listening to these things uh, and you get your podcasts in, subscribe, share with your friends right now. I'm going to keep it short and sweet today. Um, I think you guys will enjoy this conversation. Even the ladies that are out there listening, I think you'll understand why it's important to have a strong traditional masculinity uh, in your life, in culture, society, and in the world. Uh, I think too much right now is, is being forced down our throats with this whole idea of toxic masculinity. And it's, 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 uh, that's kind of a misnomer. Yes, there is toxic masculinity. It's weak men that are out there in the world. It is men who treat women uh, horribly and don't, they don't embody what it is to be a man, to be a protector um, in, in this world. So we're going to get into that here today uh, and kind of delineate between, you know, what some people would call toxic masculinity. We're going to go straight into what is traditional masculinity. And that's what today is going to be about. So we're going to start out with a quick word of prayer as always, and then we're just going to dive right in. So without further ado, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We just praise your name on high, Lord. Thank you for giving us an example of how to follow. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for guiding us and directing us all the days of our lives. Lord, we know that we are sinners, and we confess that we are sinners, but we try our hardest when we repent and come back to you each and every time you welcome us back. And Lord, we're grateful for that. Lord, I ask you to be with me today. Give me the words to say. Give anybody tuning into this the eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that grows them closer to you, Lord. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. All right. <clears throat> Traditional masculinity. What is it? We have to define it. We have to talk about why it's important in society and why we need to continue it on into further generations. You know, there's that, you know, that cycle that, you know, Hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, and weak men create hard times, right? My goal for a lot of it, at least in my life, and it should be for everybody, is to break that cycle. Why is it that a, a strong man creates good times and these good times create weak men? Why don't we create good times, stronger men, and create stronger times and even better times? It shouldn't go in this cyclic thing. And you see it all throughout history, how... You know, a king goes in and he conquers a realm and he brings peace and delivers people out of, you know, barbarians or whatever. And there's a time of peace. And then suddenly his son, his son takes the throne and it's just it just goes just to chaos. Right. Because the son's been given everything or, 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 or whatever. That's generally what it is. The son inherits it and does have the same work ethic as his father because he hasn't been instilled in it because dad's been all fighting wars. I, I get it. We can break this cycle and we're going to talk about how we can do that using this model of traditional masculinity. So I've got a little little outline here I want to go through and we're going to get into it. So I've always been an advocate for these values of traditional masculinity. This concept, which emphasizes traits such as courage, physical strength, and a sense of duty and responsibility, it's been a cornerstone in society for generations. So again, throughout this episode, we're going to discuss the meaning of traditional masculinity and then why it's important for this continuation of a strong society so we don't fall into weak times. So let's define it. Traditional masculinity can be defined as a set of values and behaviors that have been historically associated with men. These values, again, include strength, courage, self-reliance, the sense of duty and responsibility. Looking throughout history, Men have been expected to embody these traits in order to provide and protect their families and their communities. So let's talk about strength. One of the key aspects of traditional, ma traditional masculinity is physical strength. This strength has been essential for men throughout history, as they have been called upon to perform tasks such as hunting, farming, defending their homes and communities. 
think of going to battle, think of anybody been in the military, police, night watch, whatever. That's what strength is. It takes physical strength to do these things because if you're weak, you're going to get steamrolled. In many ways, physical strength has been a symbol of masculinity and has been admired by both men and women. If you are physically strong, it means you are probably consistent in other aspects of your life. So when you are strong, you can protect people. On the flip side of that, if we're going to talk about it being toxic, you could um, you could assert yourself onto other people. Is that necessary from time to time to drive out weak people? Yes. If you are physically stronger than the bad guys, you could overtake them and drive them out of your community. So if you have more strong men with the rest of these values we're going to get into, you drive out the weak ones who are uh, the criminals or the, 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 the degenerates. I can't speak this morning. Uh, or, or whatnot. So physical strength is, is one aspect of this traditional masculinity. Okay. Courage. We're talking about courage. Another important aspect of traditional masculinity is courage. This courage has been demonstrated in many ways throughout history, from soldiers fighting in wars to men taking on dangerous jobs in order to provide for their families. Courage has been an essential trait for men and it's allowed them to face challenges and overcome obstacles in order to achieve their goals. You have to have some type of courage. And despite overwhelming odds, overwhelming obstacles, if you are truly uh, trying to protect your family, you're going to go out there, even though you, you may have a little bit of fear, overcoming that fear and going into battle anyway, that's your courage, okay? Next point, self-reliance. Traditional masculinity also has a sense of self-reliance. This means that men have been expected to be independent and able to take care of themselves and their families without relying on others. This self-reliance has been a source of pride for many men as it, as it has allowed them to demonstrate their ability to provide and protect those that they love. When you are so reliant on everybody else to do things for you, you lose that sense of purpose and your duty. And we'll get to that in, in, in a minute. Too many of us are dependent on, say, the government, for example, or, or other people or our parents or whatever. If you're so reliant on these other people, not reliant on yourself, you can't grow physically stronger. So you have to be able to take back some of that self-reliance. And, and again, there, there is a, a purpose for government. It's to help kind of guide and direct and, and kind of shift society and things like that. But basically just um, the consent of the governed to that we say, hey, we want you to do this, this, and this. That's all we want you to do. But when they start taking more and more and more, you've got to take that back. This Be more self-reliant. Grow your food in your backyard. Have some backyard chickens. Um, be able to do basic mechanics, basic electrical work, basic plumbing, little things like that. And then we have the specialists to come in and take, take care of other things. And you can learn from them too and become even more self-reliant. Um, if everybody did their part in just a little bit more, then we wouldn't have such a big overarching government in, a, in the fingers of everybody's little uh, daily routine. All right. So think about that. Self-reliance. We just talked about duty and responsibility. I mentioned that a second ago. Traditional masculinity emphasizes a sense of duty and responsibility. This means that men have been expected to take on important roles in their families, communities, and society as a whole. Again, think of, you know, I hate Let's let's not say that. I don't hate politicians. I dislike that we have career politicians. People, men, strong men have to step up and they have to lead in, in society. But doing it over a long period of time and become more and more becoming more and more corrupt over time, that's when you have an issue. That's when you get into tyranny and tyrants and, and okay, the revolutions and things like that. We don't we won't want that. We want strong men to step up into these roles. And if you just govern your house as a strong man, your duty and responsibility, you're going to do just fine. But the sense of duty and responsibility, it's, it is essential for a continuation of a strong society because it allows men to take on these leadership roles and they work together to achieve a common goal. So if all these men are working to protect their community, their city, their state, their nation. If everybody's moving in the same direction, it drives society forward in a positive trend, protecting the weak, delivering the innocent, driving out the bad guys. That's our duty and our responsibility. If you neglect that or you become a tyrant or you become somebody who's a degenerate or you become somebody who's willing to just exert dominance over other people just for your own personal gain, now we've got problems. That would be toxic masculinity. Okay, But just being a strong man providing for your family, that is not toxic whatsoever. We need more of that. 
So gents, let's make it happen. So why is all this important in society? Traditional masculinity has been important for the continuation of strong society for many reasons. So by emphasizing the values that we've talked about already, again, strength, courage, self-reliance, duty, and responsibility, it helps create society which men are able to protect and provide for their families. So when you are protecting your family, when you are presiding over your family, when you are providing for your family, that's, that's your own little, little microcosm in the macro, right? And again, you expand your sphere of influence. If you are doing your part and your neighbor is doing their part and that neighbor is doing their part, and we're all helping to helping each other move forward in, in the right direction. Throw in, throw in God and your morality and you bring a community together under, under one big umbrella that we are not only doing right for ourselves, but we're doing right for the glory of the Lord. That is going to push society forward in a positive direction. It's going to drive out evil. It's going to drive out degenerate behavior. It's going to drive out all these things that, that weaken and crumble society. And you were able to build more. Because if everybody's doing their part, not like we're little worker bees and, or slaves building a pyramid, but we're trying to build a godly nation. And we do that by having this, this core root of traditional masculinity, physical strength, mental strength, and spiritual strength. Three pillars, right? So strength and courage, again, it's important because... Um, men, when you, you're going to be called at some point to defend your home. Hopefully, hopefully never in your lifetime, but you need to be prepared to do that. Better to be a, a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war, right? Threats throughout history have generally been physical in nature, and having the strength and the courage to overcome this is necessary. You have to be ready for that. Sometimes, in like say today's age, it takes more strength and courage to just stand up and say, you're just going to call me a name. You're going to call me a racist or a bigot or a misogynist or some whatever blank phobe that's out there. Sure, call me that. I know I'm none of those things. So sometimes being taking a stand and having the courage to say, I'm not any of those things despite what you tell me, but here's why uh, you might think that. Let's have an open conversation. When people start hissing and gnashing their teeth and calling you names, you've already won the argument. Okay? They may blast you on social media for whatever. I've been called names before. But you have to have strength and courage, whether, again, if, it, if it's a mental, physical, or a spiritual assault, as we can see throughout um, society right now. So put on your armor every single day and make this happen. Self-reliance, again, why is it important? Because when you are able to take care of yourself and one's family, you're able to maybe help your neighbor out more and get them on the same page. So the whole the whole goal is, is again, if you have... Say we have a strong king, for example, who's not a tyrant, who his job is to govern. What a good leader, a good king would do is to be like, okay, I've got the resources to help you become a better farmer, you to become a better blacksmith, you to become a better whatever. We all, you know, a rising tide raises all ships. We want to be able to bring every, everybody up. And if that one leader is strong and he's helping everybody do that, that's the, that's the goal, rather than just propping himself up which happens too often. Acting was right. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. But when we are self-reliant, the more skills that you have to be self-reliant, the better off you are and the less the government can control you. Ultimately, we don't want government control. You have In any society, you've got to have some sort of authoritarian system that allows uh, kind of guardrails. And that's how you focus and move society forward. Because if you just let it go to the winds and you're so tolerant of everything, society starts getting pulled more it's become more flat instead of more focused, if that makes sense. This sense of duty and responsibility, it's important in traditional masculinity and for the and for its importance in society because when you encourage men to take on these important roles, it gives them purpose. Whether it's in their family, you're the you're head of the household in your community, you are a a representative of your neighborhood and, and at the meeting, you are a police officer, you're somewhere in, in, in the fire service or something like that. You have some sense of purpose because you are protecting your community, you're providing for your family. Traditional masculinity helps create this society where men can work together to achieve these common goals. So if all the, all, all the men are working together towards a common goal, the problem with today is what is our common goal? Guys, we have to figure that out. Our common goal should be to bring back traditional masculinity, to refocus ourselves and get society going in the right direction, not being afraid of the name calling. Because I have friends all across the spectrum 
I have male friends that are black, white, purple, green, from all different religions and stuff like that. But generally speaking, we all just want to be left alone to provide for our families and move society forward. It's the crazies on this side of the political spectrum and the crazies on this side of the political spectrum that are yelling at each other from way on either side. When those of us here in the middle are just like, would y'all just stop? Because you're not going to do anything about it. Neither are you over there. All you're going to do is yell at each other. Expect us to go to, to fight each other for you. That's the rule. And the sooner we realize that, these people on the fringes on both sides, you're dumb, you're dumb. Guys, let's stay in the middle and, and, and refocus. Oh, but you're a blah, blah, blah. Or you're a blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Your duty is to your family. Your duty is to the Lord. Your duty is to keep to be a good person and do right by your fellow man. If there's evil in the world, call it out. Try to stop it if you can. I get there's things that happen that you have to be um, not walk on eggshells. What's the term? You have the discretion is the better part of valor, right? So if something's happening, you are able to deal with it without injuring a lot of other people. If it's little things, get it. But if it's something you can directly intervene in, do it. I don't need to call the police if my neighbor's having a loud noise after 11 o'clock and say, hey, can you go deal with this? I might just call them or go knock on the door. Hey, man, tone it down. It's very simple. that You don't have to call the police or get the government involved in every little aspect of your life. Make things happen. So we're going to shift gears now, talk about the role of men in society. So we've got these, this establishment, this definition of traditional masculinity why it's important in furthering society because strong men create good times. If we want to continue with the good times, then let's take the cycle in reverse. We need strong men. If we're going to take it back, how do you make strong men? Okay, the hard times, the lessons learned from the hard times, let's not repeat them and make stronger men to create even better times. That's our new cycle. So men in society. Our role as men is... We were, again, we emphasize these these the strength, courage, self reliance, duty, responsibility. When you have that strong role, you become a leader just naturally. That's what you're made to do. And historically, if you look at it, that's men have generally led revolutions. They've led country building. They've led you know, all these the the culture heroes and things like that are generally men. Moving things forward. Now, they're not saying there aren't important women in history, but the overarching trend is that strong men in society rallying together will make said society stronger. You protect and you provide and protect for your family. That's one of your most important roles is to protect and provide. This is a key aspect in this tradition of masculinity because it allows a man to demonstrate his strength and courage in order to protect. Whether it's going out and foraging or hunting or just going to work to provide and, and bring back something to your family. Or if you have to literally go out and, and fight for what you believe in. Either one of these things, that is what you are called to do as a man. That's your role. When you contribute to your community by taking, again, that leadership position, by just leading by example of most of the time, walking and keeping a good physique, keeping you know, well-kempt. Smiling, hello, good morning, good afternoon, holding doors for people. Just little things contributing to your community. Going into church, getting involved with mission, getting involved with, with um, the youth, or getting involved in Bible studies and bringing all these uh, different ideas together. When you contribute to community, that's just going to make it even stronger. That's what you're supposed to do as a man. And you, again, if you take on those important roles, you're just going to drive society in the right direction. And then leadership. That's, an, that's just... You are built to be a leader. Channel it. Take it. Assume that role as a leader. You will find. I, I found when I was in the military, sometimes I had some kind of quieter guys. You would be surprised at how well people will perform if you give them responsibility, if you give them a sense of leadership. If you rotate, you know, I sometimes would rotate team leaders or they would, it's just a common practice in the, in the Marine Corps. You would sometimes rotate leadership just to give somebody else an opportunity to make it happen. And you either fail or you, or you either fail or you succeed. Either way, you learn a lesson. If I succeed, I know what I did right. If I fail, I know what I did wrong to not do that next time. It's good practice in building each other up. So by giving someone a sense of leadership, 
ownership, a responsibility that gives them purpose, allows them to have that strength, allows them to have them, their self-reliance because they're reliant on their training to go forward and, and execute the mission and make it happen. You can do that, men, if you will just allow yourself to take on that responsibility. Don't be afraid to fail because we all fall and we all fail. Pick yourself back up and keep moving forward. Again, leadership is an important aspect of traditional masculinity because it allows you, gives you that purpose to guide and direct whatever unit you're responsible for. It's your family unit, your fire team, whatever. That leadership is what you are called to do. Embrace it. So what is the future? What, what are we doing with traditional masculinity? How do we move forward? What's well, important that we bring back traditional masculinity, these values, our strong minds, our strong bodies, our strong faith. If you work together and overcome challenges, you can seize these opportunities for men to continue being important in society. We don't need to continue to get, be getting railroaded and, side, railroaded and sidelined in today's society because what happens when you relinquish your, your power and authority? Society gets weaker. Just look around you. Not saying women don't have a role. We're going to get to that in a minute. Women do have a role, but it's not a natural role. When, when women, they get really stressed out when some women, okay, most women get really stressed out when they have to be in a really stressful, high-demand leadership position. It's, it's not because they're, they can't do it. It's just because it's not natural for them. It's easier for a man to, to step up and take a leadership position in a high-stress environment and continue to work forward because we're just built different. Men are more logical and rational. Women are more emotional. So decisions you make are going to change. Lego did an experiment not that long ago on kids playing with Legos, and it was like a Batman Lego set or something like that. When little boys played with the Batman, the little boy becomes Batman. He goes out, I'm Batman, I'm fighting crime, I'm Batman, I'm riding motorcycles, I'm Batman, I'm grappling up through the, the city, I'm Batman, I'm building, you know, blah, blah, blah. When, when, when little girls played with the toys, whether it was Batman or whatever, Batman becomes the little girl. I'm Batman going on a tea party. I'm Batman doing this. They, it, you see how roles are different? The, the women, they in, internalize that, say, I'm going to take, I, yes, maybe I'm dressed as Batman, but I'm going to do all my normal girly stuff. Where boys, they take, I'm Batman. I know what Batman does. I'm going to do Batman things. They're just different. We're just built different. And the more people accept that and understand that, the better off we're all going to be because we are just inherently different. So the future is bringing it back to this traditional masculinity. Assuming you're right, it's not, again, not by force, not by coercion, not by, hey, you, you're just, I'm better than you and I know it. It's, it doesn't work like that. You can lead by example, let your merit go through and, and, and take back this, uh, this power, I guess it were. And again, it's, I don't want to use power in a negative sense, but this is what you were born to do is to lead and to provide and protect men. Women, you can be strong, awesome women. Find your strong, awesome men. Together be a strong, awesome family unit and provide for your strong, awesome community. Stick together, help each other out. So these challenges and opportunities, they're going to come up. And the more men that embrace this traditional masculinity, the more equipped you are and the more help you've got to overcome whatever obstacle is in there. We've got to work together and seize these opportunities to, again, to make sure that men still have an important role. Because men, you get lulled to sleep. You get lulled to sleep with, you know, alcohol, drugs, pornography, video games. Read a book, get into the word, lift weights, get sunshine, drink water, fresh air, make love to your wife, all these things. Take your role back. Don't get sidelined. I'm not going to let myself get sidelined. You shouldn't either. Education. How do you continue the traditional masculinity? Men teach your sons to be chaste, to have sexual discipline, 
to chase their purpose, to be able to provide, to have a skill to provide for their family. Don't just run around chasing women all day long. That's what you, that's kind of your natural, you know, primitive urge, but you have discipline. Master yourself. And then you will find a strong woman to uh, take this path with you. Okay? And she can be a traditional feminine. Maybe we'll do an episode on traditional feminine traditional femininity. Fem fem femininity, that's the word, right? <laughs> and we're talking about education, right? By teaching young men these values of strength, courage, self-alliance, duty, and responsibility. We've talked about throughout this entire episode. You can instill these values in the next generation of men. How do we break the cycle? We create stronger men. When you're a leader, the hope is that you are teaching your guys so well that they are better than you. If, you, if I can make my sons better than me, I have succeeded. If I can get my sons to go to church willingly after age 18, I call that a success. And then for them to move on and find their purpose, to find a godly woman, to continue this cycle of greatness. Instead of, guys, I've done, done all the work. I'm just going to give it to you. You guys take it from here. No, absolutely not. Give little boys challenges. They like that stuff. Make them work for things that they want. They like that stuff. Excuse me. The role of women. We're going to start wrapping up. It is important to recognize that women have played a strong role in shaping traditional masculinity. When men and women work together to promote the values of traditional masculinity, it creates a society, a society in which men and women are able to work together as a family unit to achieve these common goals. And if you're looking at the family unit as the basis for a, a strong society, the man is the head. He's following the example of God. God leads, leads, leads us in our, in our lives. If a man follows God and follows his example, follows the example of Jesus, he leads, he protects, he provide, provides, he presides. The woman should have no problem following that because the man's taking care of that portion of the responsibility. Now, the female can do her part. She can be nurturing. She can be loving. She can be caring. She can keep the house together while the man's out hunting for food in a traditional, like, uh, in an in, in, in antiquity uh, type situation. Now, man goes to work, takes care of business, comes back home to a loving wife, smiling children, warm food on a table. What is wrong with that? The problem is that we've got a society right now that has men uh, at work all day, women at work all day long. Men, are, again, are better at not necessarily multitasking, but Okay, I'm done with work. I come back. I'm home. They can generally do that a little bit better. Females, when you go to work, you got a, you got your personality, you're doing your work thing over here. You come home. Now you've got to switch gears completely and get back in, into wife mode. Men can be consistent across the board. I can be a protector, a leader over here at work, but I can come home and take some of those same principles and apply it at home and keep going. Ladies, you they've got you going all these different directions and have to wear so many different hats. It's not fair. But they, you, they do that because now you need two people working to afford the same things we, you know, could to get on one income 50 years ago. The kids are in school all day long, so they're not even, you're not even raising them. The, the state is. <laughs> if, if your kid's in school for six or eight hours a day, five days a week, for 13 years of their lives, while you're at work and maybe they get home before you get home or they go straight into sports or whatever, when are you having, a, having time to parent? And to instill these morals and things like that into your kid, they're always busy doing something else. We can take society back, ladies and gents, but it takes strong men and it takes strong women. We can do it. It's just going to take a while, but we can do it. So to conclude, traditional masculinity has been an important part of society for generations throughout history. When we emphasize these values that we've talked about, again, strength, courage, self-reliance, duty, and responsibility, traditional masculinity has helped create a society in which men can be men and do what they do best, is lead, provide, follow the Lord. I'm going to add that in there because a lot of people don't talk about that. You see all these influencers talking about these things, but you have to have a rooted foundation in Christ if you want all this to work and come together.
Because when you do that, he will give you the tools to protect and provide for your family and your community. Drive this cycle forward, break the old cycle, and start a new one. That's not even a cycle. It's more of a line. Men, hard times, strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times and strong men create stronger men and better times and so on and so forth and then when you have even stronger men you have better better even the best times and and you keep that should be progressing towards the future instead of constantly going in this ah just doom loop we don't want that so moving forward to the future we have to continue to embrace these values of traditional masculinity if we want society to be strong because if we don't it's going to continue to crumble and you're going to have a fall of Rome situation where it's going to be chaos and death. I don't want that. I don't think any of you guys do either. So take back your role. That's all I got. It's all I got this week. It's of utmost importance, men, that you get right with the Lord Stop your bad habits. Stop your vices. Stop being distracted from your purpose. Assume your role. And women, you, women are made to follow you. Not, not in, in a sense that they're just sheep to follow you, but you have to be their shepherd. And just like Jesus is our shepherd, you have to take care of them. And when you work hard for your wife and your kids, they're going to work hard for you. There's nothing more satisfying than coming home at the end of a day and my wife and my children are there to greet me with smiles on their faces because they know I'm out working hard and they're home working hard for me. And then we all come together and have a wonderful time together. If the family is the basis of society and each little unit is doing the right thing, society goes forward. And you can, it can work in a society like America where we've got all these different values. But if everybody accepts, let's just be good people and move forward, that's what's going to happen. But you got the, the, the problem is you've got weak people way over here on this side of the political spectrum and on this side of the political expect, spectrum expecting us to fight their battles for them here in the middle. When instead, we should probably look this way. Hey, knock it off. Hey, knock it off. Because you don't represent everybody. And you don't represent everybody. You're doing stupid stuff. And you're doing stupid stuff. The rest of us just want to move forward and be left alone. So stop electing dumb politicians. That's all I got. All right. <laughs> next week. I don't know what we're going to get into next week. Uh, I think this is a good, good chat. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this episode, uh, please like, subscribe, share this with a friend. Share it right now. Whether you're on YouTube, Rumble, Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I'd be curious, where do you guys listen to this most? I can see some of the analytics, but I can't see them all uh, across all the platforms. Um, check us out on Good Pods. Good Pods is a podcast discovery platform. I have the, the link's down in the description below. Create an account over there. Rate this episode. Rate the whole show. Uh, that helps us grow over there. I think we were sitting on number, number two in the charts this week. So thank you for your support over there. Check out the Three Pillars Podcast website. We've got blog posts that come out every week. Got You'll have the, uh, links to my workouts of the day, different things that I'm doing. I'm changing up the workouts right now, trying to add more cardio in, Oof, but it's it's working. I feel better. Um, also quotes of the day, all kinds of motivational stuff over there. So make sure you check out the Three Pillars Podcast website at wordpress.com. Just look it up, Three Pillars Podcast WordPress. You'll find this. And I believe it's down in the description as well. Um, that's again, that's all I got for you guys this week. Thank you again very much for tuning in. We're going to end with a quick word of prayer as always, and then kick you guys out for a fantastic weekend. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise your name on high, Lord. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for, for protecting us. Thank you for presiding over our lives. Thank you for displaying strength, courage, self-reliance, and duty every single day for us, giving us an example of that in Jesus. His walk on this earth is an example for us to follow. We have a blueprint, a template, some a, a perfect model to follow. We just don't choose to do it, Lord. Guide us back. Bring us back into the fold. Thank you for coming, you know, leaving the 99 that are doing well and coming after us knuckleheads who are that one sheep that wanders off 
okay, gets ourselves into trouble. Thank you for always bringing us back, Lord. Lord, I ask that you bless anybody tuning into this. Give them peace, give them strength, and help them to take back their role. Whether traditional masculinity or femininity, I think we'll get into that next week. And Lord, we just ask that you give us faith that just surpasses all understanding that we grow closer to you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm Chase Tobin. Until next week, Tobinator out.